Dire team ban. Alrighty, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Steel Series Southeast Asian Cup Season 4. This is Game 2 of a best of three between AMD Mineski and First Departure. Thank you, of course, to Steel Series for sponsoring this tournament. Um, <clears throat> thank you to Dota Talk for very kindly allowing me and Pip Muckle to cast this. And a shout out to dapbet.net esports betting. So, first game was pretty exciting, honestly. First Departure, I would say, didn't really perform to their usual level. Um, they got the farm up that they needed. I mean, a 30-minute hex, 4-star, well, a 9-minute, in fact, 4-star onto Chibi is nothing to complain about, but still, Mineski just seemed to walk all over them for most of the game, winning the majority of team fights, and Jules was just completely untouched on his Marana um, on the bot lane. I mean, do you have any thoughts on that game that just occurred? Well, it was great. Um, it was typical Mineski fashion with Jules just AFK farming away. He got his Lincoln Sphere up at a reasonable time, I would say. He got his Yasha, he got his Desolator, and from there it was just, well, go, go, go. Um, everyone just played very nicely on Mineski's side. And First Departure, they put up a great fight, especially in the mid lane. Um, but somehow, some way, Jehoven, he got his farm and he made a huge impact just on pretty much all lanes, as well as the clockwork. Being played by Jesse Vash was exceptional performance of, on his side. I'm a bit sad he didn't went for a necro book, but well, he played well, so it's all, it's all right. Well, I think Jay playing a kind of support esque life stealer was enough. Strange item and strange yeah. hero builds coming up from Mineski in one game. Um, the first departure stealing that Shadow Demon Mirana combo immediately. Mineski picking up the Alchemist as well as the Nyx Assassin. So I just I just love how in Southeast Asian Dota, it's just everyone just says who can get the most aggressive heroes as fast as possible. And, well, I don't think either team has really got a big advantage at the moment. Shadow Demon Marana is a fantastic combo. Um, they could run at support, you know, having those two roaming around, or they could have a uh, maybe an aggressive trailing farming Marana. I haven't seen First Apart to pick the Marana up too many times, honestly. Um, so I don't really know how they'd want to run it. Hana normally does play in the offlane kind of initiation type heroes, like a clockwork. Normally don't see him on heroes like a Marana, but hey, maybe they're willing to switch it up and have kind of an aggressive trailing with a Marana in the offlane, but. It's a little bit hard to tell, but I'm very excited to see this combo coming out from First Departure. Yeah, interesting to note, First Departure has a full lineup, Paul Son is here, and he's ready to rock, so... I'm pretty sure we're gonna see some more, let's say, communication coming at It was great last game, but it wasn't, like, perfect, what we usually see from them, so... Yeah, I'm looking forward, and Invoker Ben, interesting enough. Well, Invoker is incredibly popular within the Southeast Asian scene. He's picked up a band most games, honestly, so I don't, I'm not surprised to see him as a band, though. Against First Departure, I haven't honestly seen them play Invoker much before. It seems to be more, um, like, Insidious Idol and, uh, who else is it really likes Invoker? Like, uh, RQ and stuff that really like to pick the Invoker up. But, hey, it's getting rid of a really annoying AoE here. And it looks like Mineski are getting rid of those teamfight just galore heroes like the Elder Titan and the Invoker. And Versa Parcher is getting rid of the strong supports that combo over the Nyx. Yeah, and Alchemist first pick. So, I mean, he's picked up and pretty much every game. And he's just such a versatile hero. He can be played mid. Rushing this mechanism, he can be played as a carry. Although, we didn't see much of Alchemist carry as of late. And, of course, he's an exceptional support. Just because his stun is so long range, you can make the plays happen. On a try lane, you can roam him. You can do whatever you want. And even in the later game, he doesn't fall off. He can just farm away with his Grievous Greed and be like a fourth core. So, incredible pick up there. Nyx Assassin to boot. Um, we usually see Nyx Assassin in the middle lane. Although he's also played as support, of course, so... Yeah, we'll see what Mineski's gonna go for with him. Any thoughts? Well, it kind of depends, I think. I think Nyx Assassin and Alchemist are both really good pickups for Mineski because they're, I suppose, more reactionary to how you want to put them. So if First Departure, you know, for example, I know Outworld Devourer is banned out, but if First Departure picked up an Outworld Devourer now, well, Mineski could just put the Nyx Assassin in mid lane. Um, if... Uh, you know, first departure pick up a, I don't know, a Dragonite in mid lane, then they may be better to put the Alchemist there. So, I mean, those two hero picks, are, I think they're really good because they're very reactionary and they can rotate them to whatever role they need depending on uh, what first departure to decide to go for. But I do know Jay loves to play that Alchemist, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see Jay picking up the Alchemist and doing what exactly what you said about running as a kind of semi-carry. He, he plays it as support, he picks up a Quelling Blade and bites his way through the trees at top, and then he picks up a Midas and then just goes full carry mode YOLO when the mid game hits. I think Jay, even though he plays support for Mineski, he still misses those days when he was the uh, the mid hero and just 
carry in the game, but he's a, he's a little bit reckless, I would have to say, with his playstyle sometimes. So, I mean, Mineski might want to pick up another stun, but probably some ranged heroes would be nice now, because they're versing a Clockwork, and already they've got two melee. And First Departure have got a really defensive hero with the Shadow Demon already, so it's going to be up to Mineski to pick up something that can kind of uh, counteract the defensiveness coming out from a Shadow Demon and a Clockwork. And Crystal Maiden, I suppose, is a strong support that can... They roam around the Alchemist quite efficiently, roam around with the Nyx Assassin quite efficiently, and this does mean that either Nyx or Alchemist are going to be playing in a core role. So, hey, first of all, I know that much now, but um, that isn't really very much to know at all. And that's probably going to be a harness clockwork in the offlane, I would be guessing. Yeah, interesting uh, to note, first of is pretty much using the exact draft from Mineski from last game. So we'll see how that goes. That is true. Yeah. First departure, just they're just getting their ideas from uh, Mineski now. <laughs> well, it worked Following last the game. Winner. Yeah, I guess. I blame him. <laughs> so let's see if there's a Queen of Pain inbound now. Which should be not the case, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I feel like first departure might be more inclined to pick up um, Marana as the mid here and picking up, you know, maybe a bit of a harder carry, something like a. Probably not an anti mage, but. You know, maybe a. Luna or something like that, but it's hard to tell really. I mean, I think it depends on if Chibi wants to be playing the mid role or the carry. But yeah, so Miranda's gonna be playing a core role, Sand King, Shadow Demon, Roaming supports together, and I I do like that combo a lot. Though I don't understand why Sand King is suddenly so popular. Like I didn't see him for about a month, and now he's been in about I would say maybe six out of the ten games of cast in the past couple of days. Ooh, that's your second support chance, so it's gonna be both. Core Nyx yeah. Assassin and Core Alchemist. Wow. I like so it. It must be maybe a farming alchemist? Yeah. Safe line alchemist with an Nyx Assassin middle. Crystal Main and Chen doing their stuff. Um, only thing, of course, Crystal Main and Chen both can jungle very effectively. So they will get a lot of levels. So maybe First Departure has to offensive trial but offensive trial with a Sand King and a Shadow Demon is very risky. So we'll see how that goes. And what they're going to pick up. Yeah. I I can't, I can't imagine first departure aggressive trial in. -in. Typically, they do just run a passive trial in. I mean, a Marana saying King Shadow Demon trial in isn't, is nothing to laugh at, I suppose. And with a Chen of the Jungle, they do have the ability to run an aggressive trial in. But I feel like since this is, you know, a best of three and they're already down one game, if you run an aggressive trial in and you fail with a Marana core, it kind of puts you a little bit on the back foot and it's very hard to come back from that. Whereas if they just run a passive trial in and have the Roman supports, it could put them in a little bit of a better position. But it depends if first departure want to have Marana as that, you know, position one carry, like Jules will be playing it, or if they want to pick up another hero and run Marana in the mid lane, because I, I do believe I've seen Chibi play Marana once in the mid lane before, so they could pick up a hard farming carry at this point, maybe, I don't know. Like I said, something like an anti mage that's got mobility, able to move around the map, or I mean, lifestyle has been banned out, so not him. But Luna is another one who could do okay. Well, they could go for something a bit more unusual, like a Spectre, and just go for a more team fight oriented kind of carry build, and then just go play a bit of a four protect one because they've got a really nice four protect one lineup at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Interestingly enough, First Departure did not ban out the Timber Saw for hmm. the off lane. And a long druid, wow. How do they gonna lane? Well, okay, this is really weird, because Hana, he normally plays lone druid for the team, and he normally plays clockwork as well, so... Maybe it's gonna be a mid-clockwork tri-lane with Marana and off-lane lone druid? I mean, lone druid is a kind of hero that you can give dedicated farm, but he's just as strong running as an off-lane hero, especially once the changes have come to the uh, the laning phase, such that it meets closer to the... Uh, they're on the... Radiant, so the Radiant Tower, so... I don't know, uh, this Lone Druid does give them a little bit more carry ability, which is something they were lacking a bit. Marana is a core, you know, she's she's got good carry ability, but she's not that great, but I suppose Mineski also are kind of lacking a hard carry too, so... I mean, Alchemist, again, he can play a hard carry, but... I don't know, we'll have to see. But like I said, Timbersaw is still in the pool, so maybe Mineski is just going to grab that for their off lane and just go have a really early game Alchemist going for like a... An armlet, S and Y, something like that. Maybe a You just muted my mic, Lily. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, maybe a Vanguard. There you go. I'm done. <laughs> Ooh. Well, big thoughts there. No, I absolutely agree with you. Alchemist with the Vanguard is nothing to sneeze at. He's uh, very tanky with the Vanguard pickup. He's just like not taking any damage, and he's also regenerating pretty much all his um, all his health in about 
what, by like 5 seconds it feels like. So he's gonna do great if he picks up this Vanguard. Or maybe we will also see him just go completely slick slotted by 35 minutes style with a Midas pickup early on and just go AFK for him. I mean, it's, you know, it's Mineski after all, so they could very well do this. And they're taking the time there with the last pick. 35 uh, seconds left on their bonus time. First departure also using pretty much all of the time. Wow. And we'll see what they're gonna go for. Because they also could lane the Nyx Assassin as an offlaner, although we don't see that as much. So, 15 seconds. Come on, Mineski. Well, <laughs> if they were going to pick the Timbersaw off, I would have thought they'd just rush pick it. Maybe they're going to go for, like, Bounty Hunter and just gank. Um, I mean, if it's Jules playing the Alchemist, are they going to random? Juggernaut. Wow. What? What? <laughs> Jules on the Juggernaut? Okay, so, a mid-Alchemist. And Jesse Vesh on the Nyx. On the offlane? Well, yeah, wow. called it. Got it. <laughs> GG, well played. Yeah, we'll like see. It. And Joven on the on the Alchemist, so that's looking cool. Well, that's gonna be I don't I don't I don't know. Interesting lineup, I suppose. Yeah, it's interesting like is pretty much the word. And we also are gonna see how Hana's doing on this Lone Druid. Because I'm pretty curious. Lone Druid has to get his Midas up and or his relic ASAP, so well, we'll see. Going over the players on first departure, playing the Mirana, we have none other than Chibi. The lone druid, as mentioned, is going to be played by Hana, heading to the mid lane with a train of whole first departure, is Polson on the clockwork. We have Lubby on the Sand King, now they're going to smoke, and of course Kai playing the Shadow Demon. On the side of AMD Mineski, we've got Jay playing that Crystal Maiden. Oa is going to be on the Chen. Jesse Vash on the offlane Nyx Assassin. Joven on the mid Alchemist. And Jules, of course, playing the Farmer. And he's going to be walking right into a five man smoke gank. I don't really know how they can kill him since he has got the spin. Overlay. So I think he should be okay. Oh, my overlay's terrible. <laughs> but oh. it's, it's fine now. It's fine now. Well, here they go. They will be catching, getting revealed now. Kai, Chibi, they all know he's there. They will be able to get off the disruption. Yes, they will. And Arrow has to hit this perfectly. Or Lubby could go in sex mode, but he managed to get the spin off. And they are going to be chasing him down as five. If they can land this Arrow, he will be going down. Arrow's going to be flying out. And it does actually hit. Oh Jules tried to dodge, but not enough time. And first place is going to be going the way of Hana on that lone druid. Wow. What a first blood. Yeah, and they have clarities on the Sand King, so... That's, I mean, it was some commitment coming out, but this is no problem at all. They got, like, so much experience from the kill. Yeah, and the overlay's fixed. Please, chat. Please. Uh, they'll, they'll, they, they'll talk about it for the rest, like, of the game. Yeah, they'll hashtag fire pin. Thanks. Fire I'm, pin. I'm done there. <laughs> yeah, the screen should be good now. I'm I'm seeing it on my laptop right now. Alright. Yeah. Hey, speak up on the chat. <laughs> so fast. <laughs> oh, did you see that? He's riding on his something. I would say it's a pig. I want to awesome. see it again. Well, a um, little bit of aggression coming out from Mineski. They are kind of hiding around in the, the bushes here. Jay being a bit cheeky and blocking the uh, creep wave there. But there's three heroes in mid lane for the side of first departure. It looks like they're they're just kind of trying to force Joven out of lane, playing really, really aggressively onto him. They want to get Pulse on a really nice advantage in this mid lane. And Chibi on the off lane on the Marana should be fine to solo against Jules for the meantime until these supports make it up here. I can imagine Jules is not going to be having a happy, happy, fun time. Nope, Marana. There's only that much you can do. Whoops. Oh, actually, what is Jay doing? He and Oa, they're lurking in the wings. And somehow, the Sand King is gonna make a play on the Alchemist. Does he? Does he? Oh, he gets disrupted. The Alchemist will channel his stun. He's gonna get... Oh, he's gonna get pushed away. And he's stunning himself. No, this could be disaster. But somehow, no one's taken really damage. What? Because well, the two supports from uh, Maneski are rotating in, Jay and Owa, so they know they can't initiate onto Joven, but hey, they've given Poisson a really uh, nice start to the game. I mean, he's managed to get uh, one CS. Wow, so maybe not the best start. <laughs> but still, he has managed to force Joven back out of the lane just enough that, uh, you know, Joven, I think, is going to be suffering a little bit. He's going to be feeling the pain. Poisson is out-leveling him, and already... Oh, Joven's actually got that bottle up already, so that's going to be giving me a lot of grief, but Poisson doing what he can to deny it. Actually, Joven going to be charging up a stun. Poisson will just uh, force him back, making sure he's like, completely out of mana. And in comes Jay as well as Oa. This could be another kill on the map. There we go. 
First departure, going to be losing a kill onto Pulson, going the way of the Dyer, but still, Mineski now on the map in terms of kills, and... Whew, pretty even start ultimately. I mean, first blood going the way of first departure is great, but still, a kill on Pulson, who they were trying to create as much space for as possible, is not the ideal start for, uh, for first departure. Yeah, meanwhile on the top lane, Kai's biting his way through there. The Oh, are they gonna make a dive on Jules? He gets disrupted. Lobby's coming in. There's an arrow throwing out. Ooh, perfect play by Jules. He's just spinning away. But will he die now? They're just right clicking him. And there's a burrow strike. And is it gonna be enough? A healing water's deployed. He's healing himself quite nicely there. And the tower's dealing so much damage onto Chibi, but he just leaps away. Yeah, I mean, Jules did his best, but first departure are just biding their time. I mean, spin doesn't last forever, and they know that uh, they can pick him off. And actually, on bot lane, Hana can be wow. a bit of trouble. There so is sneaky. smoke gank. Yeah, these supports from Mineski just creating so much space at the moment. They are going to go into Hana. Hana's on the run. Crystal Nova will be slowing him down. Then in comes the Centaur stun, Mount of Burn, and Chen is going to get the last hit now. So, two to two. But of course, you got to remember that it's Jules who's died off twice. So, this means that Jules is probably going to be raging and not helping the team out for the next 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah. He's so possibly a win for Mineski in morale. <laughs> well, the thing is, what Hannah did very nicely, he used his bear just to spot this out, this area. And, I mean, Mineski was like, they were smoked. And they went this way down here until they revealed the smoke. And that was just perfect play. Hannah hadn't had any idea they were coming. And what a great rotation coming out. And they're creating space, like, all over the map, as you said. And on the same time, of course, all supports are just doing great rotations. The Shadow Demon... Yes is top lane now. He's now trying again the disruption. There's an arrow to fly. It's gonna hit perfectly and Jules is gonna get dropped again. Well, <laughs> Jules, he must be on so unhappy right now. Uh, that is not the start that he normally gets. But 0-3 to three to 0 on him. He probably wants the supports to come up top lane, but at the moment they're saying to themselves, hey, we're shutting down Hana. But of course, the thing worth remembering, actually, Alchemist in the mid lane charging up the stun. He is gonna get nice stun by Lovey, actually. They're gonna wow. get sight of him and now Jovan is just going to stun himself. What play is there by the supports? And now Jovan is probably going to be going down. Poisson gets him caught in the cogs and 4-2 to two now going the favor of first departure. That was just perfect. That stun on the invisible hero by Lubby over here. And then Kai coming up the hill and getting out of range, uh, sorry, vision of Jovan. They could not have played that better. Yeah, um, Bo Dota, like, all over the place. In the meantime, Chen is finding levels and he's doing quite nicely there. He's level 3 already. CM is what, three as well? So yeah, they, they're looking good. Although all levels are actually quite nicely, except Hana. He's really, well, he's behind and he's getting ganked. He is against the trial lane, but what I was going to say is that the thing that's quite strange about what Mineski are doing at the moment is they're shutting down Hana. Hana is taking the safe lane farm at the moment, but Hana is typically the off lane player. So usually Pulson, oh actually, man, another initiation on top lane as I speak. Jules will be able to get the spin off. Kai now going to be forced back. Rotation was almost cast there by, I think, uh, one of the supports, possibly. Crystal Maiden, maybe, but it is cancelled, and Jules now just forced to heal himself up. But still, if they give me a second to speak, Hana is normally the offlane player. He's not normally that kind of core player that carries the game. It's Chibi and Pulson who carry the game for the team, so the fact that they're concentrating so much on shutting down uh, Hana is a little bit strange. It's like, you know, you're concentrating on shutting down, I don't know, in Na'Vi, maybe trying to shut down Puppy rather than Havost or Dendi. Like, it's... It's not that they're a bad player, it's not that they don't have an effect, but it's just an interesting hero to choose to shut down when you could be shutting down someone who normally kind of carries the team forward. I don't I don't really understand this exactly. Not saying that Hana's bad, I like Hana. Please don't kill me for saying that. Oh, and Jules is in a lot of trouble again. Kai, he's going through, and there's a disruption. Will we see the arrow perfectly hitting? Oh, wow, what a spin coming out. And the Soul Catcher, he didn't hit on the Juggernaut, so maybe they can turn it around if they have some TPs coming in. But there's no support right now, they're just right clicking. Mahana joins the party, he wants to have a little bit of this Jules coming out. And there's Jesse, Jesse Vash finally joining the party. Jules is still up, Lobby is taking so much damage. Vendetta is deployed, he's very fast now. Um, yep, there's the Sandstorm, and they don't have anything to reveal him. Oh, oh, what a leap by Chubby! Chippy, Chubby, Chippy! Oh my god, 35 health, he makes it away. So, in mid lane, actually, in mid lane, Pulson a lot of trouble, but that Moonlight Shadow Chippy deployed to save himself will Whoa. also be saving Pulson. They dropped down a sentry, but no, he's duked in space and threes, and he will be able to TP out, so neither team scoring a kill from that, but a lot of little engages across the map. Yeah, that was so close. Everyone is so low HP. Mirana just leaping away. 
in the like in the face of death uh, from the Nix Assassin's done quite nicely done then everyone was top there like pretty much X mine of course Mineski just played something in the middle going in the clockwork but there's no one farming bottom uh, bottom it's like everyone just doing stuff killing people that's yeah, good to see <laughs> yeah it's a little bit uh, a little bit crazy but now they're back up to top lane probably want to go on to maybe Desi Vaj but I mean the thing about Vineski is also the heroes they picked up to counteract this Shadow Demon um, Mirana combo are really really nice I mean of course with Jules he can just spin his way to freedom uh, Nyx Assassin can immediately, oh nice arrow on Nyx Assassin in the top lane, going to be landing right into his head he will be taking a fair amount of damage, if Soul Catcher somehow hits him but he will just be able to spot that pike, pop that spike carapace that I was just talking about and I'll uh, walk away and so I was going to say is Mineski's heroes are really really good with the uh, Juggernaut having the spin and spike carapace coming out from the Nyx Assassin so it's very hard to kind of use that combo to just destroy them instantly because they've got those escape mechanisms that they need yeah the thing is the arrow has to be perfectly timed it has to be exactly over the disruption in the second the disruption ends, and this is so hard to do because the arrow is quite fast. And Pulson has taken a lot of damage, he's getting blocked by the creeps now. But Alchemist, nothing nothing there, no supers coming in. And we'll see some initiation going on the top lane. Jesse Vash as well as Jay just hanging out there. But looks like everyone's just farming away. A magic stick flying out no career. But, well, and there's some Midas on the Mirana. Midas Mirana is the new meta. Whew, um, yeah, so Jules is rotated down to the bot lane now, and looks like they will put a little more pressure onto shutting down that delicious Marana. Kai actually going to get stunned out, a lot of damage going into him, and he doesn't have any regeneration, so he's going to have to watch out. Uh, they could maybe try and get a kill on Jay, but Jay is standing him, positioning himself very, very passively. He's ready to back up and help if he can, but at the same time, uh, you know, they're not, they're not going to initiate unless they have to. I mean, Jesse Vash has got the Vendetta up, but I think he's just going to wait until he can find a kill, assuredly, before he really doesn't do anything uh, too aggressive. Yeah, not too much going on now. Everyone's just, like, waiting in the wings. Lubby has his boots up, so that's nice. He can get a range of the stun now. He really needs some levels, though. And, yeah, this is an offensive... Offensive Moon Knight Shadows. Do they gonna make a play on Joven? He doesn't smell anything as of yet. He just uses ultimate, There's so he will be tanking. Oh, he yeah, great. So Joven, he's getting initiated now, but Soul Catcher is on and he's getting just dropped. Yeah, the Sentry was great. But. There was a Sentry drop down early to try and get Pulse on down, but still managed to catch that lucky, unlucky, I suppose, Alchemist. Out and, I mean, he's 0-2 at the moment with 33 CS, really not doing so hot. Jesse Vash is pretty much carrying the team at the moment in terms of farm, and it looks like he's just trying to get that Blink Dagger up before he goes and helps the team out anymore. Yeah, they're carrying so much wards. There's a ward on the top lane, and it's all around nice play there. So, Nix has a... I mean, he has a hard life right now, just because of this anti stuff coming out. In the meantime, Jules is going bottom lane. He doesn't want to stay top anymore, just because he's he got hated so hard. But, well, he's getting outlaned by Hana just because of this bear. So. Gold graph. Pretty much even. Experience graph. 2k lead for Mineski. Nothing unheard of. But it's no big deal right now. Uh, I'm on? laughing at that that comment that guy made about how Titan win with Mirana SK SD combo in 9 minute because that was the combo we watched uh, Insidious Idol early this morning just called GG 9 minutes in against Titan <laughs> because they just got absolutely destroyed by the Mirana Shadow Demon SK combo it was pretty <laughs> so what's it was kind of um, yeah it was a passive try lane and they were just like diving behind the tier 1 tier 2 at like <laughs> 5 minutes into the game and <laughs> Insidious Idol was just like GG well <laughs> so not I like going Anyway, yeah, I mean, it's hard. Wow, they're hitting so hard on jewels. Like, so hard. Everyone just bought him, pretty much. Even the clockwork rotating in. And he can stop, of course, the juggernaut in his tracks, even though he played flurries. So, yeah. What's going well, on? Well, Maneski did just uh, smoke up, and they're heading towards the top lane, too, where Chibi is just farming up. Chippy doing really nicely. If you look at the net worth, he is actually leading the charge, and that Midas is just going to increase it. But if he gets caught out now, this could be a lot of trouble for him. Jesse Vash does have that blink dagger up, so I don't know. Unless he's got the reflex reflexes of a fox, he's probably going to be going down. He does leap out of the way of the stun, but Crystal Maiden's there. He's trying to jig around the trees. He does have the Moonlight Shadow. He's going to be casting it, but way too much damage onto him. He's going to be going down before he can say a single word. But so nice to get up there. 
Oh my god, everyone rotates in. They're all invisible. So Jesse Bash now going to be popping that spike. Carapace managing to catch two stun. And Kai could be going down. He does have to defensively disrupt himself. Unless he's going to die. He does manage to do it. But at the same time, Jesse Bash goes down. Poisson now hooking onto Oa. They do manage to take down Kai. But now Poisson thinks, maybe I should back out at this point. It's a little bit too much damage on me. Luppy going to be just walking back, chilling back. He's out of mana. He needs those arcane boots. And Jovan's actually rotated in. But still, one for two trade. They lost Chibi. But they also managed to pick off that annoying Nyx assassin who was snowballing. I would say quite aggressively and losing Kai as well. Kai just so squishy. He just got one hit really by the Chen. Yeah, and the Omni Slash just used on the bear. So Jules, you know, he's doing that hashtag value. Just like on the bear? Yeah, on the bear. The spirit bear? <laughs> was it intentional? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, it was. Like, there was no way he would have got Hana. Just getting 300 gold, I guess. <laughs> Also, guys, if you experience lag, uh, it's not me. I'm sorry. Maybe refresh or something. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, Chibi's Chibi. in a lot of trouble. Chibi getting double stunned out and just dropped down. Nice micro there from Oa. No idea what Chibi was doing up here, but hey, Oa was there to capitalize on the opportunity presented to him. But yeah, guys, it's Twitch lag. We can't fix it. I have emailed the Twitch admin multiple times about it, but they haven't yet responded. So I don't know what to do. Anyway, on bot lane, Hana could be in a bit of trouble. It looks like... Jesse Vash has come down, Vendetta hit, stun coming out, Jules, no Omni Slash, but Pulson was there to help out, and Pulson gonna be just taking the brunt of the damage for him. <laughs> Jesse Vash could be going down, Pulson actually makes it away, bottling himself up, but no, Crystal Maiden's here to save the day, and he's gonna be going down. Jules is now 1v3ing, Lubby is here to help out, Kai is here as well. And Jules, a nice entangle, might be taking Jules down. He's got the spin up in five seconds, but they're stacking so many things on him. Crystal Maiden is just playing like a an aggressive little girl, and she's going to be fighting into all of them. Jules now trying to dive in for questionable reasons and will be going down to all those po Shadow Poison stacks. And Crystal Maiden going to get sent back to base, but now Chibi wants to try and take down Oa, but Oa's got all of those pesky creeps. They haven't got any mana, but oh, they've got one stun up actually on one of the centaurs, but Chibi still decides to back out, and Oa will just strut along. At the same time, Jovan taking down the mid tower. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of even, I'd say. Was it? Well, yeah, I, I would say it was kind of even. And in the meantime, I mean, they get the tower middle, so this is great. A middle tier 1 tower is very important just because you can do the rose if you're a dire then. So, yeah, we'll see if they can make a go there. Yeah, well, I mean, that's ultimately what they want. Actually, in mid lane, post on. Just gonna get killed. Lobby goes in. Has the epicenter? Jesse Vash is gonna probably be falling for this. Nowhere for Jesse Vash to go in. It's gonna be a one for one trade. A uh, bot lane farmer for a mid laner? Pretty pretty even, I would say, ultimately. And I mean, Chibi being there for that last hit for the assist gold is making him a happy little puppy. He's still topping that net worth chart by a significant amount. I mean, Jules is nowhere near close to him. At least 1k behind, so Jules really not getting the farm that he wants. He has picked up a drum recipe, so not picking up a Midas this game. Yeah. Not a normal Jules game. Well, thing is, level wise, he's looking quite okay, to be fair. He got some levels on the top lane in the early stages of the game, and although he died four times, I mean, he's okay ish in net worth. He isn't doing great by any means just because Mirana's farming away so hard. But, you, I mean, he's just taken the jungle, he's doing his drum thing, he's soon to be level 11 and then he can fight. His Omni Slash will bounce like six times and it's great in the team fights. So he will just drop pretty much everyone on the side of Departure in a heartbeat, if they don't get disrupted, of course. Oh, and do we have pause gaming again? Please, no. No! No! Okay, um... Well, whatever. If we look at the gold, yeah, 3,000 in favor of Maneski. Experience around about 4,000 um, items. Oa has got up a mech as well as 1,000 gold, so not too bad for him. Jesse Vash's items haven't changed since he picked up that blink deck because he has managed to die three times. Um, he was 0, 0 to 3, and now he's 1 to 3 to 4, so they have been doing a good job of shutting him down. Alchemist, 0 to 2. He's got a blink deck up now, so going to be nice initiation coming out from Maneski, but... Is it going to be enough? Because first departure now hunting down Jules yet again. Oh, hook shot onto Jules's head. He has got up the spin. He's going to be casting it, trying to TP out. Will he make it? Arrow knock. Well, it will hit, but not going to be doing anything. Probably needed to save that hook shot for the last second. But good reactions by Jules, just spinning and TPing out, knowing they don't have enough DPS to take him down. Yeah, great play there. And it was a four man gang pretty much. Um, although they get something out of it, just because they force Jules back, they will get the top tier one tower pretty easily. They are, can't. Any 
defense? No, I don't think so. Alchemist has picked up his blink dagger, he's too sad, but he won't defend this. This is no way. And this is an easy tower going the way for his departure. Um, if they somehow get the middle tier 1 tower, they can like roam the jungle very effectively. But this is a great start. And we also see a very aggressive ward planted down here. So, this is great. Just, you know, jungle control, limiting the farm of Mineski. But Jules having none of it, he's just going bottom. And wow, CM dagger. Jay! Classic Jay. Well, who needs just wards if you win team fights, much. right? Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's kind of the thing, is that first departure, I've been concentrating all their kills onto the cores. So Nyx Assassin, Alchemist, Juggernaut, they're all getting, like, destroyed. So, I mean, Jay's had enough farm to farm up this Blink Dagger, which is just amazing. I mean, look at all the things he can do. He can blink in and ult and die. What fun. No, but last time I saw Jay play Crystal Maiden like this, he picked up a Midas first and then went for the Blink Dagger, BKB, Arganim, Scepter. And he was just throwing himself across the map. He wanted to get some kills, but... Ooh, Chibi could be in trouble. Jules tipping up. No, not gonna get the Omni Slash off. But, uh, nice push coming out from Mineski. Oh. They managed to take down the T3 tower on bot lane. And Kai's taking the Alchemist onto the face, and Arrow's not gonna hit. Jules eating it, and Kai's gonna get dropped there. Well, at least Chibi didn't die. And they did quite some damage on the tower, so everything's fine, I would say. Nix is in hunting? No, he isn't. Alright, everything's fine there. In the meantime, Polson and Lobby taking the farm on the bottom lane. And our carry CM is lurking. Is she making a go? Nope, doesn't look like it. Alright, so everyone just falling back, farming up. Blade of Alacrity and Kura for Jules. Making his way to the Aghanim Scepter, I suppose. Could be a Diffusal Blade. Yep, could be a Yasha. And it's a Yasha. It's gonna be Yasha. Oh well. Um... I have seen people rushing a Diffusal Blade on Juggernaut before. Not in professional matches, in pub matches. But hey, apparently you can dispel stuff. But I guess nobody at the moment on First Fletcher has got a uh, Ghost Scepter up, so it doesn't really matter. So, at the moment it's not important. But he could go for a Diffusal Blade later. Or, I don't know, a Mjolnir or something. Abyssal Blade. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Maneski going in for the Roshan, and I think First Apache need to defend this. They did have a great advantage, but it's kind of stagnated at this point, and they haven't really found too much more to... Actually, they didn't have advantage at all. It's always been in Maneski's favor. Well, I... Boy, am I wrong. Wow. That's what the first departure were leading. Yeah, it felt like. Yeah, oh well. Uh -oh. Oh, Pulson wants to steal the Aegis. He's going to miss the hookshot, though, and Roshan is just going to be taken easily by Maneski. And now in comes the Omni Slash. Chippy going to get dropped down instantly. Lubby in a lot of trouble, too. Kai is down. Lubby down. Pulson, the last one standing. And he's going to be going down as well, and Lone Druid is on the run. He's got up the radius, but the bear is going to be falling, and he does have a resummon, but still, not an ideal team fight. And actually, Joven going to be charging up their stun. Are they going to get a five-man wipe? Joven is going to get that stun off into Hana. It looks like they're going to be diving. Jay blinking forward. Hana in a lot of trouble. Is this going to be a team down? He's going to be running up the hill. He's trying to get away, but they're all tier three diving him, and nobody's playing out to help him out. And that is five down from first departure. Yeah, well... I would say the dagger was absolutely worth it just for the five man wipe on the, on the crystal maid. <laughs> Everything's fine there. She's gonna get sent back to the base. Let's see. Will she go for a BKB next? Certainly looks like. Well, just as we were saying, it felt like first departure in the lead. That happens. Yeah. And I mean, I guess if you look, if you look at Chibi's farm. It's 20 minutes into the game, and he hasn't got up a Lincoln Sphere yet. All he's got is the Phase Boots, Midas, and Perseverance. So, in terms of farm, he's actually not doing that hard. I mean, even though he he is topping the net worth chart, he's not pulling ahead as much as you probably would like for a hero that's, you know, usually seen as a, a decent early game flash farmer. So, first departure now, well, the lead has maybe been taken from them. And I think a lot of the gold lead, honestly, I'm going to say the gold lead is due to these supports. Hana has got nothing, the only one with anything Oh, actually, on Jovan's getting caught out, and this is the Aegis being triggered on the Alchemist, but the whole team is there. They're going to use the Moonlight Shadows, and... Oh, he blinks away. And Jesse Vash is going to go in. There's a stun. But only hitting the bear. And Pulson using the ultimate on Jay, but he's just disengaged, and he's going to get netted up. Stunned once, stunned twice. He's going to get disrupted by the Shadow Team. Great play coming out there. Alchemist channeling his stun. Chibi's getting stunned. Uh, what... Just some stunts going everywhere, just because we have them. Kai is gonna get dropped as well, and this is a disaster coming out. And Mineski is just in firm control of this game. And Hana, well, he can't do anything. My god, the score a minute ago was 10 to 9. 
now 10 to 17. And Jules, who was having an atrocious start, is building his way towards an Arganum Scepter and will have that up, I would say, at around about the 25 minute mark, along with the drum face bits and Yasha, so... Oh, there's Botana. Oh no. On Botana, trying to tip you out, is going to get caught out of position. He is maybe going to go down, he should be okay for the meantime, but he's trying to juke around. Jay is out of mana, so this could be okay. Jesse Bash is actually going to get trapped in the trees there, and Hana is hiding himself fairly well. In fact, what? Phase boots what? What? What indeed? They just gave up. Well. What? <laughs> what? 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 Next level juking by Hana, I guess maybe. Yeah, it was just mercy by Mineski. I think uh, he, they thought he DC'd, obviously. But um, he, was just, he was just sitting right here. What? Well, this is best juke spot. From perspective, I guess. Like yeah, top ten place in Sunsvan here, you know. This is it. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was quite a funny. Well, that was great. <laughs> Got to be honest, <laughs> <laughs> like the best juke ever. Oh man, regeneration rune gonna be picked, uh, be picked up now by the bottle of the alchemist. There it is. I don't know why he takes it. To be honest, he should have gave it to CM, just because he has this chemical rage. But, well, what have you? Rocket... Um, nothing happening. Wow. Yeah, everyone's just kind of running around. The chat's just got off to the path where... <laughs> best, um... <laughs> best escape yeah. <laughs> Well, that was oh. nice. Yeah. Apparently they were all out of mana. That's why they backed off. Yep, I mean, we're control. all out of mana, but I mean, still, it's a 1v3 situation. There's no tier, tower, tier 1 or tier 2 towers for anyone from first departure to TP to. I mean, they could have just auto attacked him down. But I guess maybe you could have turned around and got a triple kill, and Mineski were like, well, one syllabar isn't worth throwing our lead at the moment. But that one syllabar, I mean, look at him. He's, he's got 1.8k gold now, so he could be picking up a. Uh, picking up a. Uh, up a AC fairly soon. He might want to pick up some face boots and those sorts of items, which it looks like he will be. But um, I think after that, he should be good to just start rocking up that AC, which is going to be absolutely integral for kind of winning these team fights. Since the negative armor coming out from the Alchemist seems to be doing a lot more damage than it rightfully should, I suppose. Yeah, it is so huge to give this armor bonus just to all your team. And also, the, the attack speed is just very nice, of course, for the Mirana. Um, she's well on her way to the Lincoln Sphere. She finally will finish it in like two or um, well, less minutes, most like, just because she has a Midas ready. And oh, this is huge. Sand King with a Blink Dagger. But he isn't level 11 yet, so his ultimate just deals, well, it deals a considerable amount of damage, but it isn't as much as you wanted. It's not the end of all world if you get caught in a burst strike followed by an epicenter. So, yeah, it's a great pickup, but they have to do something with it. And they have to do it fast because Queen of uh, Crystal Maiden. Well, she will have a BKB before Sand King has is level 11, I think. Yeah, I mean, she's pretty much ready to snowball forward and... I mean, I don't know, man. It seemed like First Departure were winning this game, but Mineski have just pulled it out. Just they've, they've, they've had the rug under their feet and now suddenly they've gone, Hey, I'm just going to take this rug and you're all just going to fall over now, so... Hope you hope you enjoyed it. I mean, Lincoln Sphere is finally picked up on the Marana, so she will be a little bit more confident to start split pushing. But at the same time, I mean, there's three Blink Daggers up for Mineski. They can easily just get in and out of team fights, and I mean, even now an Argonim Scepter taken up onto Jules, who's about to hit level 16. Yeah, and he's just gonna, you know, jump around doing so much damage, just using his spin to farm up, TP out. And now he just has it. And also the Alchemist has picked up an AC, so even more minus armor coming out. Which is minus 11, wow. And imagine a minus 11 armor with an Omni Slash right on top. So, yeah. Whoever gets Omni Slashed, if someone eats it just on his own, he's gonna get dropped. Now, Chippy just farming away. He has a Slink and to boot. Finally, 500 gold as well up there, but he's just lacking a bit in net worth. So, he has to keep it up. And, yeah, that's pretty much it right now. Ancient stacked, but everyone's just farming. Yeah, well, I mean, at this point, this is kind of what Mineski does, is they get a lead and they really just push it 
until they've got such a lead that they can't lose the game. And, I mean, they didn't have a lead earlier, like we saw. I mean, it was Chibi on the Murano who had that Midas up who was kind of taking the most farm, but now she's just faded away. And, I mean, she's got the Midas up, and she feels like she can't even use it. She's just kind of running around the map with the Midas off cooldown and not really finding any space to kind of go activate it anywhere. But she could be going to the top lane now, and this is probably going to be a terrible choice because Jay is there planting some aggressive wards. They planted this ward last time, and it doesn't give any vision. Uh, it looks like now it is going to be given vision. Okay, so someone planted it in the wrong spot last time. It was very weird. They planted it down here, and it, they, it gave no vision. It was like that much vision. It was very, very strange. But um, I guess Jimmy will get to use that Midas, but still, I mean... I guess first of all, you could just turtle until they can turn the team fights around. Once they get up, maybe an AC, a blade mail on Pulson, as well as maybe a mech would be quite nice, and a damage item on Chibi. Chibi desperately needs some kind of damage. They could definitely win some team fights, but at the same time, I mean, Jules, who started out so skinny, is now getting quite fat for Juggernaut and they're going to be taking down all the T2 towers and how are First Apache going to defend this? Yeah. Thing is, maybe they can uh, get a nice one more combo off just like with everything. Oh, here goes Polson. He's initiating on the Crystal Maiden. I don't know if that's the right call, but Jay actually taking quite a bit of damage. Now Lobby coming through. His epicenter's channeled. He's going in and he's getting defensively disrupted. The bear's going pretty much all out on Joven. Joven taking uh, quite a bit of damage, but here is the Omni Slash. He's just dropping one, he's just dropping two. Everyone on the side of Departure just falling back for the second. And Joven stunning himself, but this is pretty much it. This is the whole thing, and there should be an easy tower coming out for Mineski. Yeah, I mean, Mineski might just want to keep pressing the advantage. Crystal Maiden is coming back to join that fight now. Joven. Well, he's back up to full, of course. It's very hard to get an alchemist low, and Mirana's not back for 30 seconds, and still, she's just got no damage items. Oh, she needs something up really, really soon. The bed just got resummoned, but it looks like they're going to initiate onto it, and this could be... Oh, this could be a very bad situation. Jay even laying down the freezing field. They want to get this bear down now. Jova just stuns himself, but <laughs> this bear is getting so, so low, netted out, and that is going to be the death of the bear. He does not have a resummon for 80 seconds. Yeah, this is huge. Bad news for Fester Pacha. No, they, they are pretty much only counter push, except for the rocket, is down, and the rocket doesn't even like do anything with the healing ward deployed, so this is the T2 t uh, going down, and Minisky, they are looking very strong in this game. Now they're making a beeline for the top tier 2 tower, and actually, looking at the vision of Minesky, it's insane. They have like this ward here, they have this ward, they have this ward, just all around vision, around this top lane area. I want to get the tower down. Well, first of all, no, they can't leave the base at this point. They don't have a race someone on the bear. And, I mean, how are they going to defend without the Radiance, which they spent, you know, 25 minutes trying to farm up? And plus, Morana still doesn't have any damage. I mean, at this point, normally you want to pick up a Yasha next, but I feel like it might be worth just going straight for a Desolator. They need some kind of damage. But she also needs survivability. We did see last team fight. She just got crushed by Jules, who just altered here. I mean, there was no defensive disruption, they used that on Lumpy to keep him alive, and so Chibi was the one who took the brunt of the whole duration of the uh, Omni Slash, and that just destroyed her, she couldn't outlast it. And Roshan's up now, so Mineski would be pretty free to take the Roshan if they wanted to. No problem there for them. Wow, this warning is insane, seriously. So, yeah, I mean, they don't have any tier 2s left to push, so the next big, uh, next big thing going is gonna be a tier 3 or Roshan, but first departure, they need to make a play and they're making it. Kai is being smoked up, as well as pretty much all of us departure except for Hana. Hana's staying in the mid lane, just to play the bait. And they're looking to make a go on someone, but Jesse Vesh is TPing out and they won't find anyone. So this is a, yeah, this is a very easy Rosh going the way of Mineski. I'm pretty sure Jules will pick it up. Because Joven is just so tanky and he has 3.5k in the bank. Yeah, wow. Arrow? No, no arrow. Well, no arrow. Ooh. Oh, Chibi gonna get stunned out by Lincoln Sphere. Means he doesn't have to worry about that. But I mean, the age is now up in Mineski. This could be their time to start pushing in the high ground. Looks like they're gonna be picking up some Necronomicons now. Necrobook 2 picked up on Jesse Vash. And Desolator, I think, is gonna be Jules' next item. Argonim Scepter is gonna be that purchase for Jay, of course. Because Jay. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, first departure, they're back, they're kind of backed into a corner at this point where they just don't have the carries that they need to out carry the carries on. Um, I guess they don't have the farm, I suppose. They've got the carries, they just don't have any farm up. 
And it kind of shows, I mean, Clockwork's net worth is lower than the Crystal Maidens. And this is not a Midas Crystal Maiden. This is just a regular walking around with 380 move, 365 move speed Crystal Maiden. So, I mean, I think the fact that First Departure didn't get enough, enough farm onto the uh, heroes other than Chibi is kind of showing now. And it's quite damaging to them because they just can't keep up. The supports are getting way more farm on the side of Mineski. And it, it really has a big effect in team fights Because if your supports can outlast the team fights. Um, you know, it, it gives you a much better chance, whereas the supports from First Departure just got nothing. Chibi took it all, Hunt took it all, Pulsan took it all, but mostly Chibi. And not that that's a bad thing, but I think the First Departure need to work on creating a little bit more Whoa. space. Well, that was a nice reaction there by both Jay as well as Chibi. Um, but First Departure probably need to create, work a little bit more on creating space for the supports to farm up to, just so they're not completely useless in team fights. Now what's insane? You know, Chen has an Ogre Frost Mage, and this is 8 armor from the Frost Armor. On top of that, we have an AC and the Vlad's picked up. So, this is what, like 10 armor even on top of that? So, this is insane if the Chen's there, yeah. Vladimir's offering, 5 bonus armor, also 5 from the AC and 8 from the Frost Armor. So, this is. What are they gonna do? Like, no one's dealing damage, there's only magic damage coming out, and the Juggernaut, he doesn't care about the magic damage, and Omni Slash just casually used. Oh, the Spirit Bear. And he has a resummon available, so not the biggest of deals. But it's gonna be on cooldown for another 120 seconds, so... If Mineski tries to just push now... Well, they're gonna have to deal with one bear instead of two, and this is great. Yeah, I mean, that bear resummon really does hurt Hana, because Hana kinda needs to be... I guess using that bear to push the lanes up, and Mineski aren't really allowing him to do that. Of course, first departure, I would say at this point, are doing an okay job of just keeping the pressure up so that Mineski aren't able to use his say just to push into the base. But at the same time, I mean, is it going to be enough? I mean, it looks like Mineski are finally ready. They all just grouped up and ran down to the mid lane. So Chibi probably needs to get a really aggressive push going to the top lane, or else they could be losing this mid racks. They don't. They still don't have the items they need to fight. And there's Necro Book three picked up on the Nyx Assassin. Necro Book three picked up on the Alchemist. I mean, Juggernaut has got the Desolator, and Arganim Scepter is being built onto <laughs> both Jay as well as Oa. So with these two Necronomicons, how are First Departure going to fight this? How are they going to defend their high, uh, high lane? And they don't have anything like an Enigma, which can just turn the whole game around in a matter of seconds. And look at the damage coming out. The tower is dropping so fast. Minus 12 armor on the tower. 45 will just dull it for a few seconds, but this is pretty much it. Joven, he's shelling the stun. He doesn't fight anyone now. He's just cancels the Lincoln Sphere, and somehow he gets stunned. Oh, it was it was another cancel. All right. So Paulson taken some damage from the mana burn, and now they're just rotating top lane. OJ. Oh, is Paulson gonna get caught out? I think he's fine. Oh, oh. Oh, he's gonna TP out. And Jay, is he gonna find him? Yes, they're gonna find Paulson. And this is gonna be the end of the clockwork. An ultimate deploy just to show off. Oh, and this guy just got so much harder for a first departure to defend this top lane. Wow. Metastyle. No damage. No fan. Not much YOLO. I don't like. 20k yeah. goldie now. As well as. Uh, wow, nearly 24k experience lead. Arrow to the face of jewels, but... Well, nothing happening. Oh, Chibi's gonna get frostbitten. <laughs> nothing happening. <laughs> First hit, uh, entangle of course. Oh wow, I missed that, I'm sorry. Jesse Vash just picked him out in the base there. Nothing much that Lubby can really do, but that's the epicenter down for 28 seconds. No buyout on him. Marana! Doing what she can to defend, but Alchemist is going to stun her out. Jay blinking in, but he's completely out of mana. But still, I mean, Chibi's trying to use the Mantra Illusions to defend, but she still just has no damage, and the Rax is going to be falling. Omni Slash going off onto everyone, just bouncing around. Moonlight Shadow is going to be popped. Chibi will just be last hitting that creep there. Too much damage to her. Joven's going to stun herself, but I think First Departure are. Uh, they're fighting a very uphill battle. Actually, Ari going to be flying out, landing on to nobody. Um, Bear just. Taking down the Necronomicon Illusions. No, Chibi wants to do it. Chibi just... <laughs> two Necronomicon Illusions in a row and she's already down to 400 health. Wow, so much Necro spam coming out. Although I really like the massing of the Necro books. I feel like if you go with one Necro book, it's nice, yeah, but it's not like game-changing. And Gigi's gonna get called out by Kai. So, well, they just feel like it's enough now. And, yeah, I have to agree. Nicely played. Great series. Well, GG well played to both teams. Congratulations to Mesky, who are going to be moving forward into the uh, 
grand finals against Titan, which is going to be played tomorrow night. Uh, first of will be versing Loyat in the lower bracket. But I mean, GG well played to both teams. Thank you, of course, to Steel Series for sponsoring this tournament. Shout out to datbet.net, esports betting. Thanks to Dota Talk for allowing me and Pimp Muckle to cast this game here. Um, thanks to Pimpy for doing the, the camera work and the streaming and the co casting and all of that. And um, thanks for watching, guys. If you want to follow us on Twitter, Pimp Muckle is P I M P M U C K L. It should be on the screen somewhere. And my Twitter is porcelain underscore lily. But we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.